so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a picture, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a picture, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The drum. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to. But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. Nolik, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sound. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm, so it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry, it's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. Is back. I thought 
thought you were practicing at home now. Tom Thomas is drumming there. I had to run away. Well, our excursion is over. And now I would just be so happy to listen to your rock group. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? <gasps> Who is that? Ah! Sick of the night, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battle. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> 
Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well there, did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look when to get it. Dom Thomas, helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> Combination lock. Ah, he's home. No lick. Are you here? Stop your hiding. I'll still find you. No lick. Is that you? Hey, come on! That's not fair! You saw! Let me go again! I don't want to. You want me to play hide-and-seek when I got a brand new game to play with? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere in the room. I took it to school with me. For what reason? To show it off. Wow! Awesome game! Tom Thomas! Can I play? Uh-uh, because I'm not done playing with it yet. Now just try asking me to do some favor for you. Hmm, wait, was it a three or a four? Hmm, it could have been five. I forgot. What about? I forgot the combination. And now I can't even do my homework. Everything I need to finish is inside of there. I'm not climbing in to find out your homework. Don't even ask me. Tom Thomas, why do you look so upset? <sighs> the code for the lock. I don't remember it. Don't you worry. Ha! We'll open it. I know all about a code lock. A simple code lock is built with a few discs that have numbers on them. In the center of each disc is a hole with a notch. When all of the discs are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. To get the notches to line up, just turn the discs to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. It looks like we gotta take a look inside the lock. Ah, I see. Nolik, where are you? There's work to do. I won't do it. I'm not gonna help such a greedy boy. Nolik, won't you help me out here? And I won't be so greedy anymore. All right, you broke me down. Omi, as soon as we're done, you're gonna let me play with the game. Right. There's no room in here. Hang in there. We'll start turning the discs one at a time, and you yell stop when they're lined up. Stop! Turn the next one now! Stop! Stop! Now try! Yes! Addy, you Tiddish! Hooray! And your code was really simple. 
Way too simple. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place. But don't show it to anybody else. And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. And why did you ever put a lock on your backpack? I was hiding the game from the other kids. Then why did you take it to school today? I wanted to show it off to my class. And did you show it? No way. If they would have seen it, they'd be like, I want to use it. I want to play. And so you hid it and didn't show it to anybody? Not to anyone. Then why take it to school, silly? To show it off there. You're just some show-off. You're just some greedy... Oops, sorry. Once greedy boy. Will you let us play now? <sighs> play away. You, are we? Can you jump a little easier? You're shaking the whole desk. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clock stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix, it, please don't let the secret out. The baby monitor. Oh! It's my old baby monitor. On. Check, check. Checking. One, two, three. Checking. It's working. Hmm. Why don't we give it to the Johnsons? They just had a baby the other day. Oh, uh, this is mine. And I'm planning on using it. Aren't you a little too big for it? No, I'm not big at all. Well... I didn't realize that you're still a little boy. And a greedy one at that. They're never gonna notice this. Hey, Fixies, are you here? We're here now. Why did you call us? I gotta show you how I turned into a mind reader. I find that just a little hard to believe. Okay, then I'll show you. I'll leave you alone, and then you'll hide this button wherever you want. Then I'll come back and find it. <laughs> you got it. So where's a good hiding place? Well, we gotta think of one. Right here, under the keyboard. Great. Go on, Nolik. Come on in. We're ready for you. And now, I'm going to read your thoughts. Here I go. Hmm. You hit the button here. Look. Ta-da! He really does read minds. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Bet you can't do it again. Well, I bet you I can. We're gonna have to be sneakier. Verda, she's the most beautiful girl in our class. She knows it, too, and doesn't hesitate to use it. She can even be a bit sneaky. Like when she needs help with her homework, then Digit suddenly becomes her best friend. But if she doesn't want to carry her pack-a-mat, she'll say, Fire, please help me. You're just such a strong fixie. But all us boys like her just the same. Digit does, and Nolik does, and I guess I do, too. Although, I really like Simka more. Or maybe Verda. Or both of them. I haven't decided yet. Verda can be difficult and even bossy sometimes. 
But one thing I know for sure, there is a good friend. A friend that'll always come help. Well, that is if she's able to pry herself away from the mirror. I think that we should throw it down into this pencil cup. But then we concentrate on another place. Hmm, that is good, but it won't work, Fixies. Come on in! Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. It's in here. Titty? Simka, were you thinking about the cup? No, I swear. And my mind was blank. Then who did, huh? Who? Uh-huh. Tom Thomas, what do you say we go again? As many times as you want. I know how he's been doing all of this. It's a baby monitor. That's how he can hear what we're saying. I don't get it. A baby monitor helps parents watch over their babies. The system has two units that look like wireless telephones. The parents keep one of the units by their side and put the other one in the room where the baby is sleeping. If the baby suddenly wakes up and starts crying, the unit in the baby's room will pick up the sound and send it by radio waves to the parents' unit. Mom or Dad will hear the crying and go and comfort their child. And so he's listening to us now. This time I know what we should do. We'll hide it under the globe. Uh-huh. Aha! Huh? Where is it? If you read our minds, you'd find your button under the baby monitor. You tricked me. That's really not nice. And spying on us is nice, you think? I'm sorry, I just thought it'd be fun. Well, anyhow, Tom Thomas, you're too old for this thing. Unless, of course, you still need it. I'm not a baby. I was just, you know, checking it. I'll go and give it to Mom. Mom, I'm not greedy. About what? Let's give this monitor to the Johnsons, and this car is for their baby boy. Hmm, I don't think that baby's big enough yet for your car. So what? Soon he's gonna get bigger and become a big boy, right? Like me. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The pack a map. Uh, Simka, can I have the pack a mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! <laughs> You're really good with that thing! Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. You did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. To get a tool out of a Pac-Man, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pac mats and there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was gonna be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you gonna ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. 
But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Ah, uh, I'll never pass it. You will. He's going to ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. You got it. Thanks a lot, Dolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. <sighs> Krampus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember. <sighs> the topic I changed. It's a hammer. You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound in nails, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could bruise it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. Super. Sure, you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Krampus, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only. It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right. Hammers, wrenches, drill screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack of mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we fixies sure know how to keep secrets. Fixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There is a one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The drum. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to. But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. No, like, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sound. You are? I think it's a ghost. 
Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm, so it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry, it's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. to your rock group. will be on pipes and tubing. Right here inside of this laboratory, you can see them all over. Look! Over there! And there! 
some more over there, and there's another one. So, who can tell me some different uses for tubes? Digit. Uh, They're used in plumbing to carry the water. No, like, in school, we don't give an answer without being called on. Digit. You can. And for carrying waste. I am talking to Digit now. Gas goes through pipes, too. Stop interrupting us. And don't forget about smoke in a smokestack. No, like, that's just rude behavior. Out right now. All right. And a shower hose. That's also a tube, right? I told you to get out. Yikes! And a vacuum cleaner's got one, too. Hmm. And those spy glasses that pirates use when they're sailing. Hey, what do you say we all go and sneak out of here? Great idea. Let him call out to himself. Shh. And a trumpet's a tube that you blow through. Nolik is my younger brother. There's a lot he still doesn't know. But that doesn't stop him from getting involved in things he probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, that can get him into trouble. So, every once in a while, me or my parents have to rescue him. No, I wouldn't call Nolik a pest. He's just a bit curious. That's why he broke the number one fixie rule, hide from humans. Nolik's the one who first became friends with Tom Thomas. Well, I was there too, but Nolik started it. Actually, <laughs> first it was Grampus. Many years ago, he befriended Professor Eugenius. And after that, the professor let us have our school in his laboratory. So it turns out that Nolik is just like his grandfather. Digit, go on then. Tubes are, uh... Wow! Just look at all the tubes in here. There's rubber ones and glass ones that are curvy. Oh, yeah! Pens! Parts of them are tubes, too. Ugh. Um... <laughs> he stopped talking. He ran out of ideas. <sighs> and those tube slides at the water park. <laughs> the barrel of a rifle and the shell of a bullet. Those are tubes. Oh, there's a tube with a serious crack. And it's also dripping and hissing. It's dripping? Where? How can I show you when you kick me out of class? <laughs> What's going on? Take a look. That tube up there is leaking. <gasps> That's acid dripping out. Is that dangerous? It's awful. Any second now, it'll explode. <gasps> Where did Professor Eugenius go? He went to eat his sandwich. So what do we do? It's a disaster. Don't panic. Fire, Verda. Go to that hose and shut off that valve. Zimka, go get a pack mat We'll fix this pipe ourselves. It's very important to be sure that a pipe won't leak. But making pipes that won't leak isn't so easy. Pipes can be made by rolling up a sheet of metal and sealing it up. Unfortunately, the seam can break. And that's why people have figured out how to make pipes without seams. They do it by stretching out hot metal on special machines. And PVC pipes are squeezed out of hot plastic like pasta. When the plastic is cooled down, it hardens into a pipe. We fixed it just in time. Nolik, way to go there. Hey, Simka, where is he? Don't know. <laughs> he finally left. Here I am. Nolik, I want to thank you for being alert. And I'd like you to join our class. Tiddish! Only don't forget, in my class, students cannot answer unless they're called on. Now then, pipes and tubing. Digit, please continue. Well? But Nolik said all of them already. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, not all. A straw for drinking a shake is a tube, and some noodles are tubes made out of dough. And what's it called? Uh, that thing. A hole in a mountain. Wait a second, I'll get it. A volcano! That's not it. They go this way. I mean the kind that go like that. <laughs> They're tunnels! You got it! Well done there. Yeah. Even when they're
they're magnified. It's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The cell phone. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Masi and Papus come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business. A work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. <laughs> Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing. The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh. Not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give them a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call them, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. We're just going to listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> Oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our Fixie ringtone. Telephone is. It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Sun, 
You're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Marcia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? <gasps> Who is that? Sick of the knife, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battle. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. 
If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well there, did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look when to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The barcode. And so. What do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. Wow, look at all these boxes. If we have to look inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No. Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm. And what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. <laughs> If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. 
I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for hmm, a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today, on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In the refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The fan. Pass him on the left. Step on it. Now pass him on the right. Look out for the wall. Hit the brakes. Why didn't you hit the brakes? He was just too scared. What do you mean too scared? Something got into my eyes. Those were your hands. My turn. Let me show you how it's really done. Oh, what's wrong with the computer? Oh, it's been really acting up for a while. It turns off by itself. It's no big deal. I just turn it back on. I don't like this at all. Come on, Nolik. Let's go inside and take a look. Just like people, machines can get sick, too. They can get a very high temperature and even start coughing and sneezing. And if a machine or an appliance gets seriously sick, sometimes it can be too late to fix them at all. So wouldn't it be better if we could keep them from getting sick in the first place? Everybody knows that people who look after their health get sick less often and live longer. And the same goes for machines. Machines break less often and live longer if they're properly taken care of. That's why machines need to be checked from time to time and cleaned and oiled. And that's what's called preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is something that always should be kept in mind by humans and by fixies. Oh, what is that? What is what? Can you hear that? What are all those sounds? It's probably just mm, a fixie eater that woke up. What? What do you mean, fixie eater? Didn't you know that inside of some appliances there live horrible monsters? They love to attack fixies and eat them up. And the smaller the fixies are, the more the fixie eater likes to eat them. Ha <laughs> ha! And how come you never told me anything about fixie eaters before? I didn't want you to get scared. 
<laughs> All right, scaredy cat. Let's keep going. looks like nothing more than a simple little engine with a propeller, the computer couldn't work without it. It has the very important job of keeping all of those other parts cool when they start heating up. It cools down the inside of a computer by blowing a stream of air. But if the fan gets dirty and starts working poorly, the computer might get overheated and turn off. Or it can simply break. You have to turn off your computer. How come? I'll tell you later. That part's done. Now we oil it. Let me try. All right. It's oiled up. <laughs> Just like your nose. Tom, Tom! Turn it on! Tideesh! And then suddenly, I hear this terrible roar of a fixator. But I wasn't scared one little bit. And I just ran right into the battle. And Simka? Oh, she was hiding somewhere. You know, she's a girl and they're all cowards. So I had to fight the monster all by myself. I guess that was an example of how girls hide like cowards when they're too scared. <laughs> well, um, yeah! Fixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let the secret out. Secret out. Shh. The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? In the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! Huh? Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, fire. I won't do it for you. Blah. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again? I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. 
And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Uh, uh. Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, fire! I'm not joking this time! Please believe me, it's there! Hmm. Nice try, fire. Oh, look! He even used smoke this time! No, Simka. That smoke's from a fire! Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth! I swear I'm not lying! This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here! Tula! Simka! <laughs> Turn off the soldering iron! Uh-huh! Got it! Be careful, kids! You have to stay back here, away from the fire! And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher! <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Oh. <laughs> Fixies are just the greatest. Thank you, you saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> not at all, colleague. If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. Fixies <laughs> go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There is it one. The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah! It's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... 
not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No! Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm, and what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for hmm, a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today, on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In the refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The pack a mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the pack of that? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! <gasps> You're really good with that 
thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. You did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a Pac-Man, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was going to be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you going to ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Ah, uh, I'll never pass it. You will. He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. A lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember. <laughs> the topic I changed. It's a hammer. You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound I'm sure you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Grandpoos, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, for your finger you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right. Hammers, wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack of mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we fixies sure know how to keep secrets. Can you believe that fixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when 
they're magnified. It's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Tom Thomas, aren't you done yet? Yeah, show us your surprise and quit drawing. But this is the surprise. So make yourselves comfortable. Quiet on the set and action. <laughs> You should put a huge bump on his head. It's just like a cartoon that you drew him there. <laughs> he did draw us a real cartoon there. Oh, right. Real cartoons, they only show them on television. But they make them exactly the same way. <laughs> Animation is made with many, many pictures called frames. Each one of the frames is a little bit different from the one that comes right before it. For example, a character can lift his arm up a little bit at a time. And then, if you watch the frames very quickly, one right after the other, it looks like the character is really moving. And that's how cartoons are made. And you know what? To make one minute of a cartoon, you might have to draw more than a thousand frames. Oh, wow. I'm not patient enough for that. It's no big deal that your cartoon's short. Especially since it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. Tom Thomas, who is this kooky guy you drew here? You're just joking, Nolik. You don't recognize yourself? So this is supposed to be me on here? Did you already forget what happened to you this morning? Simka, you're it. You can't catch me. <sighs> I'm too fast for you. You weren't too fast for the pole. Ah, oh, Simka, you didn't have to tell him about that. Real sisters don't treat their brothers like that. Oof. And your cartoon's not funny at all. No, Lick, don't go. It's okay, he just needs to sulk for a while. While he's gone, there's something I want to show you. Do you have a cartoon you can put on the TV? I have plenty. What should I do? Let's watch it again. But now I want to show you the same cartoon a frame at a time. Here, take a look. This is a frame. And here's another and another. Isn't that cool? Uh-huh. So cool. And then back at regular speed, there's 25 frames every second. What should I do? It's magical. Simply, you know... I feel awful for Nolik. Yeah, I feel awful too. There are many different ways of making animation. Hand-drawn animation is, of course, drawn by hand. And stop motion is made like this. The animators pose the model and take a picture of it. Then they move the model a little bit and take another picture. And they do it again and again and again until there are enough frames to make the characters look like they're moving very smoothly across the screen. Another popular style of animation is clay animation. In these films, everything is built and rebuilt out of modeling clay. But today, most of the cartoons are made on a computer. At first, they make a computer model of a character, a sort of digital puppet. After the models are built, they are colored and animated to move. This is the kind of animation that's used in the Fixie cartoons. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Are you drawing a new cartoon? Nah, I started fixing the old one, so Nolik will stop being angry. Good, keep drawing, and I'll go and get him. No, Lick! I'm not here! No, Lick, forgive me. Please don't be so mad. There's a cartoon to watch. I've already seen your stupid cartoon. So what'd you do now? Put a huge bump on my head? Not a chance. I did it all over again. I'm sure you'll love it. 
You sure of that? All right, go ahead. Show me your cartoon. Quiet on the set and action. There you go. Now that cartoon I really liked. Good, because I'm all out of paper. Well, I think the first cartoon was funnier. <laughs> Whoa, but this one's much better, of course. Yeah. Mm -mm. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let The tools. Hang on. There are these really cool things that I want to show you. Ah. Whoa! Whoa! whoa. <laughs> Look how many things you got all at once. <laughs> Your dad's going to be so angry when he sees what you did with all of his tools. I'm going to put them all right back where they were. And where were they? Open the box and you'll see. It's neat. There's a special place in there for each one of the tools. <laughs> Try hammering in a nail or drilling a hole with your bare hands. Uh-huh. There's no way. But with the help of the proper tools, it's a piece of cake. But of course, that's only if you know how to use them. Tools need proper care. If the head of a hammer is loose or a drill is dull, then you shouldn't work with them. It's dangerous. And when you're done working, put the tools back in their places. Or you'll be tearing your house apart trying to find them the next time you need them. Huh. The pincers go here, and the wrench goes over there. This drill bit's too long for this spot. Let's see if it fits in this one. Huh. Any idea what this tool is for? For splitting wood or carving stone that chisels what you want to own. <laughs> wow, Simka, you're a real poet. <laughs> now try to answer this little poem. When you have a thing to measure, this round tool is quite a treasure. This tool, right? I know what it's called. It's a measuring tape. Let me measure you, Nolik. Wow, you've grown. You've almost reached one centimeter. I also have a rhyming riddle for you. What bangs a nail into the wall to make sure pictures never fall? A, a hammer. hammer! I was first, and the hammer goes right here. And now I have one for you to guess. If you need to screw in screws, here's the tool that you should use. A, a screwdriver. screwdriver! I was first, again. You got it right. All right, Tom Thomas, we'd better hurry. We still have a lot of tools here to get sorted out. Humans, just like Fixies, use hundreds of different tools to do their work. Picking the right one depends on the task at hand. For instance, if you need to hammer in a nail, use a hammer. But you don't use a hammer for a screw. For that, there is a special tool called a screwdriver. A wrench is the tool for tightening nuts and bolts. A vise is used to hold a part in place. And a drill to drill a hole. If you need to cut a piece of wood, you should choose a saw. You could use a handsaw, for example, or a hacksaw. Different kinds of pliers can be used for snipping, gripping, or bending. If you need to smooth something down, you use a file. If you learn how to work with tools properly, you can build just about anything. <sighs> Looks like we did it. Just in time. Oh, and how about this? Do you know what kind of tool that is? I don't know. There's no place for it in here. Just throw it out. Come on. And what if my parents use it? Looks like we did something wrong here. <gasps> my dad came home. Tom Thomas. I'm in here. Hi there. Reading. Way to go, son. Huh? Oh, oh. I don't get it. Where is it? What? I put a piece of metal under the table leg so it wouldn't shake, but it disappeared. So that's where the tools place is. <laughs> Did you take it? What? I didn't. It must be somewhere under the table. 
and you look under the sofa. Uh, all right. What do you think he wants? He wants us to get that metal thing out of his dad's box. Come on, let's go. You got it. Any luck? Uh-uh. Ah, uh, me neither. I found it, Dad. It was under the table, just like I told you. Huh, you were right. It's strange, how could I have missed it? Maybe you're just, uh, tired from working too much. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Did he... <clears throat> what? Uh, it's a new word, Tadish. Tadish? Hmm. I do like the sound of it. But if you need a picture, please don't let their secret out. But if you 